This section is 9.5, which is about the alternating series. And so this is going to address our series that have the negative one in front of them. So regardless if it's negative one to the power n or negative one to the power n plus one, um, if it's an alternating series, you can apply these two conditions. And if both conditions are met, then the alternating um, series will converge. So of course the first part is at the limit of a n, which is the part without the alternating part. So the part of the series that does not alternate is a n. And as long as that limit equals zero, then, the con then, then one condition is met. We know that if it doesn't equal zero, it diverges automatically, right? So if it equals zero, that's the first criteria. The second criteria is that all the terms of the series must get smaller and smaller. So what that means is that for each term you have, the next term should be smaller than it or equal to that, okay? And so we've got to verify those two things and then we can um, conclude that the series, the alternating series converges. So for part, um, example one. So this is the alternating part. I'm just gonna take this as my a n. And I'm gonna take the limit as n approaches infinity of that a n. So as my denominator goes to infinity, my fraction goes to zero. So first criteria is met. Second criteria is that I have this case, okay? So a n itself is one over n, but a n plus one is the next term. So if I plug in plus n plus one for n, I get one over n plus one. Now n, remember, is one, two, three, four, all the way to infinity, which is positive numbers. So n and n plus one are each positive numbers. So if I multiply both sides of this fraction by the common denominator, I am multiplying by a positive number, which means the inequality symbol will not flip around. So these will cancel and I'll just end up with n, and on this side the n's will cancel and I'll end up with n plus one. Now no matter what n is, n will always be less than or equal to n plus one, since n starts at one and then is every integer after that. So the second criteria is um, met. So then what we say is by the alternating series test, the original series, the alternating series part, the whole thing with the negative one um, converges since both criteria have been met. So for example two, so very similar, just the part without the alternating um, part is going to be a n. So I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over 3 to the power n. Same as cases before, this is going to go to infinity, which means that the whole fraction is going to go to zero. So we do have the first criteria met. The second criteria says that the first term, which is one over, or the nth term, has to be greater than or equal to the next term. So that would be three to the n plus one. Now again, for every n, one, two, three, four, five, this is positive and this is positive. So we'll multiply both sides by the common denominator. So this fact, this, sorry, cancels, this cancels, and I end up with three to the power n is less than or equal to three n to the power one. Now, if it's not obvious here, you can break this up. Remember your power rules. If you have something to one base times something to the same base, what do you do with those exponents? You add them together. So we essentially have this case and we want to split it up into two. So if you do that, you can split it up into three to the power n times three to the power one. And by the commutative property, it's the same as three times three to the power n. Well, this is three to the power n by itself and this side is triple three to the power n. Of course, the tripled version is always going to be bigger than the single version. So the second criteria has been met. So again, by the alternating series test, that means that um, this series here, the alternating one, converges. Now let's go ahead and look at example three. Um, and this page is a little bit weird because I think 
um, I might want to split the video. So I'll stop with example three for this video and then we'll continue with the absolute convergence theorem in the next video. Okay. So for example three, we're going to do the same thing. So again, this is the alternating part. So I'm only going to take this as my a n. So I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 to the power n minus 1 over 2 to the power n plus 1. And I'm kind of not going to do, well, I guess I could. I could do um, the L'Hopital's rule. So we have done that before. And so then we get 2 to the power n. The derivative is 2 to the power n times ln of the base. Derivative of 1 is just 0. And then we get on the bottom 2 to the power n ln of 2 and the derivative of 1 again is 0. And then in this case everything reduces. And so we just end up with the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 which is 1. Um, this does not equal 0. Okay. Which means by the nth term test according to the nth term test that means the series will diverge. Because even so, even if I include the alternating part, um, what that means is that the limit, the alternating part will just mean that this value will alternate back and forth between 1 and negative 1, which further means that that limit is not going to equal 0, okay? So even though I didn't apply the nth term test directly to the alternating, um, to the series I was given, um, you can just inference that because you are dealing with the meat of the series. You just didn't deal with the alternating sign. So if the meat of the series is going to uh, approach a finite number, then this is just going to make that finite number toggle back and forth between sign. In either case, whether you're looking at the positive one or the negative one, it's still not going to be zero. Okay, so the nth term test still applies here. So in this case, it diverges. Now I'm going to stop the video here and we'll continue with the second part of 9.5 with the absolute convergence theorem.